Hey guys, it's Josh with Budget Mechanic. Today I want to talk to you about engine noises. Now we have a great video on sounds that you'd hear throughout your car. You can check in the link above. But today it's going to be about the eight most common sounds you hear coming from under your hood. So the problem with diagnosing engine noises is there's a lot of noise coming from a running engine. It's really hard to figure out where it's coming from. So what you have to do is isolate the sound that you're hearing. And there's a couple tools that I use to do that. Um, kind of an old school one is just a long metal bar or a screwdriver and you actually hold it up to your head and you can touch different parts of the motor and you'll actually hear and feel vibrations or sounds coming through something like that. Um, another thing that is really effective that I like is a mechanic stethoscope. stethoscope. Um, obviously you put it on and with this feeler you can touch different parts of the engine alternators or valve covers or whatever and it will transfer the noise just from that area of the engine right into your ears. It's really effective. Um, I got this for like 10 bucks online. Really cheap. Another thing you can do is if you have a chunk of rubber hose, um, you can put that against your ear and it isolates the noises that are going into the end of the hose. Um, so those are just little ways that you can find out kind of more specifically where a sound is coming from. So the first sound I want to talk about is lifter ticking or valve tick. And you'd hear that most likely on startup or sometimes it would be constant and it would get faster or slower depending on how fast or slow the engine is running. So that lifter or valve ticking sound is going to generally come from the top of your engine because that's where your valves are. And essentially your valves are opening and closing your um, exhaust and intake ports, but it involves metal pushing on metal. And that's where that sound comes from if there's not adequate lubrication or if the tolerances or the gaps are too big, then they're still slamming together and making a sound like a really loud sewing machine. So the way that you can fix this is hopefully by addressing the oil situation. So that's either getting an oil change, if you haven't changed oil in a while, using some thicker oil, uh, to better stick to those valves and lubricate them better. And if that doesn't work, you may need to get in there and start replacing valve components, which can be pretty expensive. Just as a side note, some older model engines actually had adjustable valves that you could adjust yourself. Um, but if your car doesn't, it may be something you want to take to a mechanic to deal with valve problems because it can get pretty involved. So the next sound is a deep knocking or rattling. And this can be caused by a few different things and it can also be intermittent or a constant sound. So the term rod knock is pretty common and a lot of people have heard it and essentially just means that the connecting rod from the crankshaft to the piston has a bad bearing. Um, but you can get also that low deep knocking sound from uh, crankshaft bearings, um, a lot of deep bearings is kind of where those knocking sounds come from. They're pretty hard to diagnose, even mechanics have to go through a pretty specific process to figure it out. But essentially if you're hearing something low, deep, knocking inside the motor, you want to stop driving as soon as you can and get it checked out because if you don't catch that type of bearing knock um, fast enough, it can mean a blown motor. So the issues that cause these knocking sounds are not DIY fixes, but they are pretty much all oil related. So that's why you get your rod knock, you get your bearing sounds, you get your wrist pin failure is because of oil pressure. Usually that's from old oil not being changed enough or oil level got too low at some point. So that's why it's really important to keep track of that oil because it could be the difference between a blown motor or not. So the next one is a screeching or a squealing sound. This is often at startup or under heavy acceleration, but it can be constant. Uh, and that's gonna be a belt issue. So the squeal that comes from a serpentine or a drive belt is pretty unique. And uh, it comes from this drive belt either becoming old and glazed and slipping on the pulleys or the tensioner that's meant to keep tension on it is not giving it enough tension and so therefore it's slipping. So the solution to this is going to be obviously replacing the serpentine belt and or the tensioner that keeps it tight. We actually made a video on how to change a serpentine belt 
and we'll put the link to that up above. So the next sound is a pinging. It's like a high-pitched ringing sound from pre-detonation in your cylinder. A lot of people describe it as like a marble in a glass jar being shaken. So the detonation pinging sound comes from when your fuel explodes at the wrong time as the piston is coming up inside the cylinder. So it's fighting the cylinder direction. And it's really hard on your engine. And it's usually caused by some sort of fuel or timing issue. So a lot of times uh, certain manufacturers require a certain octane of gas. And if you don't use that, you can get into this detonation thing. Or maybe you just did your timing belt and you missed your timing marks by a little bit. And so the engine is trying to fire that gas before the piston is all the way up to the top. The solution is going to be trying different octane of gas, uh, either higher or lower. Or if you've done any work on your car involving the timing, just really confirming that you've done it correctly. So beyond that, you're going to start getting into EGR and computer issues with your engine, which is going to be beyond the scope of a budget mechanic fix. So the next sound is where your engine just sounds way too loud. It's like you have a race car muffler on. It's just a really loud engine noise. That's gonna be an issue with your exhaust system. So if your car sounds really loud and like some kind of crazy souped up hot rod when it's not supposed to, chances are you've got exhaust leaking out before the muffler. The muffler quiets it down, but if you've got exhaust coming out, it's super loud before the muffler. Exhaust leaks are usually pretty loud and easy to identify, and the area you're looking around is gonna be the exhaust manifold, which is this kind of thing right here, where it's the exhaust pipes, if you track them from the back all the way up, it's where they connect to the engine, and you're looking for cracks or holes, or the gasket can actually go bad and release exhaust from between the manifold and the engine. Or you'll sometimes have flex joints or fancy exhaust ports that will rust and blow out and then you get the leaks there and that's where the sound comes from. So obviously the solution is to locate and replace whatever part is allowing exhaust to leak. But because it's not too deep inside the engine, as long as you can find that leak, it's something you could do yourself. The next one is a whining noise, usually kind of a high pitched one. And this can come from many different parts of the engine but usually has to do with bearings. So all the things on the outside of your motor which are spinning, like your alternator, your power steering pump, your belt tensioner, your water pump under the fan, all those things that are spinning are running on bearings. And when those bearings go bad, they tend to develop that whining, high groaning noise. And this is where the stethoscopes comes in really handy because it could be all of those things, but with a stethoscope you can actually stick the end on the different motors, alternator, the end of the bolt on the tensioner, and you'll really hear if a bearing is going bad which one it is. So with bearings they can behave differently when they heat up. So you may just have the sound when you first start the motor or they may only show up when the motor kind of gets up to speed. The other thing is with bearings, you can sometimes look down and see. You can see a pulley vibrating or shaking when the engine's running, or when the engine's off, you can kind of see that the, the pulley from your power steering pump is kind of like cocked off to the side when a bearing's bad. So sometimes there are visual cues, um, but generally you find out which one of those things is bad, you replace the part. We do have lots of videos on replacing alternators and tensioners and power steering pumps um, on our channel. You can check those out. The next noise is a moaning or a groaning, usually when you're trying to turn your car. Big surprise, it's got to do with your steering. So tracking down noises is all about isolation. So that's why if you hear a groaning or moaning noise when you're turning the steering wheel or that sound changes when you're steering the, turning the steering wheel, chances are good that you've got a problem with your power steering. And you can further confirm this by opening the top of your power steering pump reservoir and looking down and seeing if there is bubbles or foam or maybe 
completely uh, low fluid. So that noise is coming from air in the system. So either the fluid is too low and the pump is sucking in air, or there's a leak in the system somewhere and it's drawing air in where it shouldn't. Now the fix for this could be as simple as just topping off your power steering fluid. Or it may be more involved and you have to get into replacing or rebuilding your power steering pump. Now uh, just keep in mind, if you do replace elements like that, you want to make sure that your fluid is changed as well because old fluid can actually break down seals in the system. We made a great video on how you can change your power steering fluid yourself instead of having to take it into a mechanic. You can check that in the link above. So the last noise I want to talk about is a pretty tricky one to figure out. It's a hissing noise and it can come from, again, many different parts of your engine. It has to do with your vacuum system and therefore it will usually trigger a check engine light. So a vacuum leak is where air is allowed to enter the intake system in a place that it shouldn't and causes the engine to run poorly. Now, if the hole or the leak is big enough, you'll actually get a loud hissing sound because it's under pressure as the engine is running. So you need to be listening for it when the engine's running, obviously. And what I do is I just get in here and I start playing around with the, with the air hoses. So they're going to be rubber hoses and you just start trying to see if you can get the noise to stop, change, uh, get louder, and figure out where the leak is coming from. So some real common vacuum leak areas are the big intake boot comes off your air filter, and also like brake booster vacuum lines, because they're under so much pressure, will often easily leak. Now if you can't locate a vacuum leak yourself, shops will have advanced tools that they can detect them, but you save yourself a lot of money if you can get in here and detect it yourself. So hopefully this video helped you figure out what those noises are coming from your car engine. Whether you decide to fix it yourself or have to take it to a shop, at least you know what's going on with your car. Thanks for watching, hope this was helpful. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell. It really helps the channel out. We'll see you next time.